What is going on everyone? Roadrunner Tutorials back with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be doing wipe transitions. Let's get into it. The first transition I'm going to show you is going to be the wipe and mask transition. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. I'm going to title this one wipe and 10 seconds should be good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select two clips here and put them down here on my timeline. And I really like this wide shot of the lake and I want to start with that one and I want to wipe to this shot of the leaf. So I think this transition should last about a half a second. So I'm in 60 frames per second. So I'm going to go to 230 here. I'm going to move this clip all the way here and actually I can hit N to end my work area right here and then I can hit shift command and X to trim my comp to that work area. So now I have this shot and this shot with half a second overlapping. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click go new and solid and I like this nice blue color here so I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit R on my keyboard to bring up the rotation properties. And I'm going to rotate this one about negative 60 degrees. Then I'm going to hit the S to bring up scale properties. I'm going to unlink these here and I'm going to change this one to 150. And you may not have noticed anything, but if I hit command Z and then shift command Z, you'll notice I made it a little bit longer. Then we're going to change this one to 50. Now we have this nice diagonal line here. We're going to go over to our effects and presets and type in bevel and we're going to click and drag on bevel edges and you can tune these any way you want to personally i think 0.15 looks good but the default is 0 0.10 and that looks just as good as well but i'm going to set mine to 0.15 then i'm going to go back over to my effects controls i'm going to type in drop shadow and i'm going to put that on there as well this step is optional, but I think it looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna set the opacity to 100, the distance to zero, and I'm gonna set the softness to 25 or so. And if I put this to full quality, you'll notice it ever so slightly on the edges. Awesome. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my solid. I'm going to hit P to bring up the position properties. I'm gonna scroll my playhead to where this second clip starts and you'll notice if I'm holding it down and I hit shift it will snap right to where it starts. We're going to create a keyframe here by clicking the little stopwatch and we're going to scroll the x value all the way till it is off screen. Then we're going to come all the way to the end and I'll hit shift again so it will snap to where my video ends and we're going to drag the X value all the way in the opposite direction until it is also off screen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the first clip, the one that you would like to transition away from, and hit G to bring up the pen tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a mask right along the edge of this bevel here on the solid, but I'm masking this clip. And the first thing you'll notice is that it is actually showing the next clip on the right side and the previous clip on the left side, and that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this one and hit M, and we're going to invert the mask. And that way you should see wherever the solid is going away from should show the next clip on your timeline. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go back to the first position keyframe of the solid and we're going to click the stopwatch icon for mask path. And there's two ways you can go about moving this. You can either click on the mask and move it with the mouse, or the other way you can do it is we're gonna to go to the last keyframe of the solid. And the other way you can move it is by clicking the mask and holding shift and using the arrow keys on your keyboard. And if for whatever reason you didn't make your mask big enough like I did, you can just click off the mask and then the dots should turn into circles rather than squares. You can click on one, hold shift, click on the other and move that. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure the mask covers up the whole frame. 
So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and it should have masked out just underneath where this solid is. Now you can click the mask and it will show you where the outline is. And you can use the page up and the page down keys on your keyboard to make sure that it is somewhere underneath the solid. It doesn't matter if it's on this edge of the bevel or this edge of the bevel or in the middle. So I like to go frame by frame just during my transition to make sure the mask is right in the middle. And that looks good to me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of these, hit U to bring up all the keyframes and then hit F9 to easy ease them. And it looks pretty good. Now if you want, you can highlight these and you can use the graph editor. However, I would suggest that whatever you change one set of keyframes to, you make the exact same changes to the other set of keyframes. Otherwise your mask and your wipe will move at different speeds and they will not be aligned and that is not what you want. So we can go ahead and render this out and see how it looks. So this is what mine looks like. And I think it looks pretty good. However, there is one small change that I would make to this. And that change would be, I'm going to use motion blur because it looks a little robotic with it just wiping on and off the screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click these three little circles, this empty box right here on the solid. And you'll notice right away, if it doesn't give you motion blur, you have to also check this box. If it's blue, then your motion blur is enabled. But you'll notice right away there's a little bit of blur on the edges. Here's what it looks like with the motion blur. It's a very slight difference. However, I think it looks a lot better. This is totally optional and up to you. And there we go. We are all set with the first wipe transition. So moving on now to the second type of wipe. The reason I showed you this one first was so you can easily make the second one with doing a lot less work. So what we're actually gonna do is we're going to hold shift and we're gonna to go to our first keyframe for position on this wipe. And we're going to trim down the solid layer to just where the keyframes are. So it should just be this small area right here. So we're gonna create a new composition. We're gonna go wipe two. So I'm gonna drag these two clips onto my timeline here. I can make that bigger so you can see that. So we have this first clip and we're going to go ahead and drag the second clip to where these meet. So they're not overlapping this time. And you have this little hard cut right in the middle. I'm gonna to go to the end, I'm going to hit N for end, and I'm going to again hit Shift, Command, and X to trim my composition to my work area. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna wipe between these, and since their ends are matching up but they're not overlapping, I'm not going to actually be doing any masking here. So we're gonna go ahead and create another composition. We're gonna type in wipe overlay. And this one, we're going to actually only make two seconds long. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our original composition. We're going to move this wipe down here to the front of our composition just temporarily. We're gonna copy it. Then we're gonna move it back to where it was, go to our new composition and paste it. I'm going to hit U to bring up my keyframes. I'm going to match the first keyframe with the first frame of my composition. And you'll notice when I have the transparency grid toggled, you'll just notice the wipe go right across screen. So what we're actually gonna do is we're going to close this up. We're going to hit Command D to duplicate it. Then we're gonna go up to our effects and we're gonna type in fill. We're gonna drag that onto our top one. And you'll notice the bevel is now gone. We do not want that, we wanna keep that. So we're actually gonna drag bevel edges all the way to the bottom and the bevel will come back. Then we're gonna to go to our fill and the effects controls panel. We're gonna click on the color and I'm gonna change this to a little bit lighter of a blue. Then I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to click on the top one and I'm going to change that color to a lighter blue as well. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now we're gonna hit U to bring up all of our keyframes again. I'm gonna use the page up and the page down keys to move three frames down our timeline. I'm going to move the second layer to match that keyframe with my playhead. 
then I'm going to go three frames further. And there we go. And you'll notice now we have these three lines here. And what we really want to happen is we want to have enough of them to cover the screen entirely. So now that we have three of them, we can duplicate them all, move those all the way up, and we'll go three frames from this one. So to nine frames in our composition, we can drag these all. Now we have a colorful screen. And you'll know that you'll have it right when you see all these lines here that represent your solids. When they completely cover the screen, your transition is all set. We're going to go to the last solid here. We're going to hit N on our keyboard for end. And we're gonna go Command, Shift, and X to trim our composition to our work area. Then we're gonna go back to our composition with the two clips. And when we go to our project panel, we can find this wipe overlay. And what I would do is I would go to where the first frame, where the entire screen is filled, and I would hit the star to make a marker. I would hit the page down button a few times until I see where the last frame is completely filled, and I would also hit the marker. And you're probably wondering what that's for. And if we go to this composition with the two clips and we actually drag the wipe overlay on, it will remember where the markers are that we made. And this is a really good indicator of where exactly your transition will go over these two clips. So I'm gonna drag my playhead to where these two clips meet and hold shift. Then I'm gonna drag this overlay here and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus key to zoom in. And what I want to do is I just wanna make sure that for these frames right here, the screen is covered. So that way when it goes on screen, you have the sand and the waves coming in, and then it goes to this wide shot of the lake. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, I like the way that looks, but it does need one more thing, just like we did in the last one. We're gonna go to the wipe overlay composition, and you notice all of the motion blur boxes are checked, but I did not check this one. So now we have that nice motion blur to make it look a little bit more natural. And when we go back out to our wipe composition, you'll notice the motion blur is there as well and that looks great and before we finish up today's tutorial feel free to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon to get notified when i post a new video also check out my gear list in the description if you really like this transition you may be asking yourself oh man i really have to make this over and over and over every single time no you don't if you go to the wipe overlay composition you click in the box here you can go up to file and you can go to export and add to render queue. Now, if you go ahead and render this, it will actually not be transparent, which is not what we want. So we're gonna go to lossless. We're gonna go up to the video output channel and instead of RGB, we want RGB plus alpha and hit okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to render this out. If you hit the caps lock key on your keyboard, it will actually not give you a preview which is fine, we don't really need it, and this should help your computer render this clip out much faster. Awesome, and once I have that rendered out, I can go into Premiere, and I can pull up the overlay that I just rendered, and I can import that into Premiere, and I can just place this on top of my two clips. And boom, there was no need to go into After Effects after this point, and what you can do is you can go ahead and save this wipe somewhere. So that way you can always just re-import it into your project. Thank you so much everyone for joining me for another After Effects tutorial. Feel free to comment down below what you'd like to see in future videos. Have a good one.